Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part 2 of the Solid Design Principles tutorial. In this session, we will do a quick recap of Single Responsibility Principle and we'll discuss the Single Responsibility Principle implementation with a simple example. Please refer to the Solid Introduction tutorial before proceeding. In the previous session, we have understood that YES in the Solid is acronym for Single Responsibility Principle. As per the Single Responsibility Principle, a class should have only one reason to change, which means every module or class should have responsibility over a single part of the functionality provided by the software and that responsibility should be entirely encapsulated by the class. Encapsulation is one of the fundamentals of object-oriented programming. At this moment, understanding more about encapsulation is out of scope of this session. However, we strongly recommend you to refer to the c -sharp tutorial playlist for more details on object-oriented principles. Now, you might be wondering what do we achieve with the single responsibility principle or rather with all the solid design principles. Let's first understand the motivations behind the usage of solid principles. In any enterprise software application development, which many of us are part of it, we design and develop software systems and in that process, we need to account the below factors during the development life cycle. The first being maintainability. When any enterprise systems become big, and their expected lifetime grows longer and longer, maintaining those systems becomes more and more complex and a day-to-day -day challenge. Many of us might have experienced that as well. When the original team that develops these systems becomes no longer available due to their career growth or any other factors. Sometimes, you know, the documentation may be out of sync or even not present. All these factors influence the maintainability of the systems along with a demanding need of upgrading these systems with new features to meet the requirements of business stakeholders. Hence, maintainable systems are very important to the organizations. The second aspect of the motivation is testability. Test-driven development is required when we design and develop large-scale systems. In fact, it's a good practice to have a test-driven development in the system development process itself. Hence, test-driven development is very important in the application life cycle. The third factor is flexibility and extensibility. Flexibility and extensibility is a very much desirable factor of enterprise applications. As developers, we have faced the situation of changing business requirements very often during both the development of an application as well as after it's being deployed to production. Hence, we should design the application to make it flexible so that it can adapt to work in different ways and extensible and we can add new features easily. Parallel development. It is one of the key features in the application development as it is not practical to have the entire development team working simultaneously on the same feature or component. The last one is loose coupling. We can address many of the requirements listed above by ensuring that our design results in an application that loosely couples many parts that makes up the application. Loose coupling makes the application easier and safer to make any changes in one area of the system because each part of the system is largely independent of other. Now, after going over the above points, you might be feeling little bored and looking forward towards an example that demonstrate all these solid design principles. We will be certainly doing that in this session as well as in the upcoming sessions. However, the conclusion of above is that we need to follow the best principles that lead to a robust application. Hence, Solid principles and design patterns plays a key role in achieving all of the above points. Now coming back to the single responsibility principle, by implementing single responsibility principle, we can ensure that each class and module 
focuses on a single task at a time and everything in the class should be related to that single purpose if you are wondering and asking yourself whether a class can have multiple members then the answer would be yes adding to that there can be many members in the class as long as they are related to the single responsibility of that class with single responsibility principle classes become smaller and cleaner also the code becomes less fragile hence we can say that single responsibility principle achieves the motivation points that we have just discussed let's now switch to visual studio and understand the single responsibility principle with a simple example let's say we need to create an application that performs a user's login and registration not only just login and registration post that it should be able to send an email to the user depending on the status of his login or registration however we should also be able to log any exceptions that may occur in this process as well so the normal tendency is to create an interface with all these methods let's first create an interface and name that interface as a user right click and add new item and choose an interface let me name this interface as i user let me create some methods that this i user can perform the first being login let's say login with username and password as the input parameters string username and string password let's return the success status as a boolean flag this is the first method of this i user interface the second method will be register the registration comes with username password and email as the input parameters now in this process we need to log any exceptions so let's create another method which log the exceptions which will be log error which accepts the error as the input parameter string then the next method which comes is to send an email when the login or registration is success so let's say that bool send email and we'll be sending that email with some content so let's call it out as email content these are the four methods which are required in minimum for any user to perform login or registrations at a first glance it looks very common to have these steps performed during the user registration process but if you take a deep look into these methods we can definitely figure out that we don't need to have log error and send email part of i user because the user object should be able to perform only login and registration or one at a time but it should not be concerned about log error or send email isn't it which is absolutely correct because we don't need log error and send email to be part of i user interface so we definitely need to break that down into separate interfaces let's go ahead and do that let's create another interface and call this interface as i logger and the method that this interface would handle is log error method let's move this log error method to this i logger interface also let's create another interface and name it as i email this i email will handle sending any emails so let's move this send email to the i email interface now having these three interfaces makes more sense and these three interfaces are performing their own responsibilities such as the i user performs user related responsibilities and the log error performs the logging responsibilities and email does the send email and other email related responsibilities now that we have segregated the single responsibility principle using these multiple interfaces the next step is to implement these interfaces with object creational mechanisms ganga 4 has defined many design patterns on object creations based on the business requirements hence 
we strongly recommend you to refer to our design pattern tutorial for more details on creational design patterns. I believe this session has given you a good idea on how we can implement single responsibility principle. In the next session, we will focus on interface segregation principle. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.